survey was intended to really just understand why you came to this. This is this is a presentation about preparing for this assessment. It's it's a very particular, very niche assessment, and so I felt. Um, from my own experiences having just taken this test and previously taken the other test that this would be uh, a good opportunity to share what I went through to share some of the specifics of the test and sort of like gauge preparation based on where you're coming from. Um, some quick background about myself uh, coming into this presentation is uh, I'm, I'm a consultant with Pragmatic Works. I think that uh, from from my own background, I've been using Power BI explicitly for about five years. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about experience as it relates to when and how you should take the exam. Um, uniquely for myself, I came into data from a non-traditional pathway. And so some of you on this call uh, might be doing or, or looking at this from the same direction, which is like, hey, you know, you know Steve, I'm coming at this from from a non-technical, non-computer science background. And mine is very much the same way. My background is actually uh, in natural sciences and education. Uh, and so it was, it was sort of a uh, organic growth into these products, uh, primarily starting just through using Microsoft Excel. Uh, and so my perspective on things and, and sort of my utility of, of how I got to where I came from or where I'm at now is, is born through using these tools to accomplish some job. You know, I certainly did not go to school for, for data or computer science and have no explicit training in it other than just what I've been doing with it through my job uh, and sort of like growing my skill set over the years. I, I'd say I've been using these data tools, whether it's Excel or Power Pivot, for about 10 years. Uh, so I did mention that I have two certifications. These two certi certifications were earned this calendar year uh, within 2020. So, you know, this is a very fresh topic for me coming in to talk about this assessment. Uh, so the two I have, the MCSA BI reporting, this was like the previous exam that's now being discontinued, uh, as well as DA100, which is, of course, you would hope that I would come in to do this presentation having passed this test so I can happily say, that, uh, that I did pass that test. So um, talk quickly about the outline here, and, and this might also dictate for some of you why you came here. We're gonna briefly talk about this exam. I wanna put context on whether you should take it. You're here obviously to hear about how to prep for it. There might be some context I can share about, you know, is this the right opportunity for you to take the exam uh, given what happens after you pass or what you should expect to happen. And then we're going to kind of talk in a little bit more detail about what's what you can do to prepare for the exam, what's covered on the exam, what materials are available. The big thing I want to call out in the very end here is there's no practice questions for this exam. And we'll talk explicitly about why if you start going to look for practice questions, you're going to run into some hurdles. Uh, and, and also explicitly why there's people that work with Power BI every day are not putting practice questions out there. So we'll, we'll kind of put a cautionary note that although it, you might have joined this presentation thinking, like, oh great, let's talk about practice questions, practice questions, show me practice questions. Um, we're going to dance around that topic as best we can, um, but I'll talk specifically about it when we get down to that slide. Okay, so in, in short, let's briefly talk about this DA100. You obviously are here because you are familiar with the test, so I'm not going to uh, go that much deeper in it. This, by name, is called Analyzing Data with Microsoft Power BI. Microsoft recently, within this calendar year, started changing the context of their certification exams. For those of you who've been with Microsoft or, or worked with Microsoft products for years, understand that this certification pathway what was has been in place for probably the better part of decades uh, as a way to verify and validate a minimum skill set. Uh, this particular exam is very specific to only Power BI, and it's specific to using Power BI in the capacity of a data analyst. So this assumes that you're building solutions with Power BI, not just that you know how to use somebody else's product that they've that they've built a dashboard or report in. Uh, so we're looking at it, and the test is very much geared for that lens, which is uh, part of the reason why, as a DA, you know, it's data analy analyst in it. This is also 
a next generation exam for the 7778, uh, which was part of the other certification that I had. So prior to this exam coming out, if you wanted to have the BI reporting certification, you had to pass the 778, which was the Power BI component, and an Excel component, which was 779. But we're gonna talk a little bit about what makes these exams different, um, but this is essentially the, the next gen of that previous Power BI exam. So I've taken both this calendar year, so I, there's some context I can share uh, for those of you who maybe have taken that one and are sitting around going, well, how is this different from that previous exam? Um, this is the DA100, is the equivalent certification for that BI reporting. Uh, and in many ways, that previous certification, if you do earn it and you can continue to earn it this year, actually expires January 2021, meaning Microsoft is no longer offering it. So you can earn it, it will last for two years, but ultimately when you go to renew, you can no longer renew that certification. You'll have to now take DA100. And so I think more than anything, this is considered the main certification pathway for individuals wanting to demonstrate that they know what they're doing in Power BI. And so perhaps that's why you're here. Again, that's what this test is geared for. Uh, and you know, more than anything, we're talking about an exam. So this, this topic is about how to prepare for this particular exam. Uh, it's, it's, we're not gonna go ad nauseum about specifics in Power BI, the tool itself. We're more geared towards you know, what are best practices for preparing for this exam. And so jumping into the next one, so basically, if you're familiar with this landscape of products, DA100 sits in what are now becoming Azure certifications. So it used to sit by itself as Power BI. It's now part of a broader landscape of Microsoft Azure products and Microsoft Azure based certifications. What's unique about this one exam is that it's sort of on an island. It's, while we can consider it under the umbrella of Azure, it's really just its own entity. It's not a precursor for any other certifications, like taking this doesn't suddenly get you more qualified for the next level. There is no expert level DA100 exam. It, it's, it's one and done kind of certification. So when we look at where this sits, it, it sort of falls into the wheelhouse of, of other Azure assessments, but in and of itself, it's not really preparing you for any of the other assessments. It really is sort of on its own. So if you're looking at this as a pathway to other certifications, it, it's not really going to provide you that. It, it's very much only focused on Power BI and within that Power BI landscape. Uh, the other thing to note here is that it kind of falls into two of these role-based uh, activities. One is, you know, when you look at Microsoft's documentation of this particular exam, it shows up in two areas. It shows up under Azure, which you think like, okay, well, Steve, how is, how is Power BI part of Azure? And it's really not yet part of Azure. It's sort of in the wheelhouse. You still authenticate into Azure, but it's not in the future. Power BI will very likely be embedded in some of the Azure products itself. And you could see yourself actually building and, and accessing solutions from inside of an Azure environment, you know, above and beyond what we're already using with the service of powerbi.com. The other piece that this exam falls under is just business application. So it's kind of categorized twice. I'd say that Power BI falls into the Power Platform family of skills, and that's like, all right, well, you know, I've got Power BI. What are the what are sort of the companion tools that sort that fall into the same wheelhouse? And those are Power Automate and Power Apps. Power Automate used to be called uh, Microsoft Flow that was renamed. There is an exam at the bottom. If you wanted to, it's an intro level exam, a fundamentals exam against this Power Platform family. Uh, part of that does cover Power BI. So if you're looking to extend some of what you already know into this Power BI as well as to other products, you know, there's, there's some merit that you might want to consider looking at that fundamentals exam. But again, this is merely all focused on just this DA100 certification. So, you know, the big question you have to answer, and perhaps why you're, why you're here, is should you take the test? Um, and 
I think that that's the root of why many of you are maybe here. You, you saw this talk and you're like, hey, I should take this test. What a great way to reposition myself. And so we're going to go into a little detail about you know, what, what expectations should you have? Like, why are you here attending a webinar to prepare for this exam? And, you know, the first thing I'll say about this exam is that it is an associate level. So it's got two stars, expert as three stars. You know, associate implies that you have some experience with Power BI. Uh, these tests are not designed for you to just like spend an hour studying and somehow pass. You know, there's a certain amount of experience that is required just to sit for it, just to understand what's going on in this landscape. Um, I'd say also from my experience, having moved between a couple jobs, this assessment is not a requirement for most Power BI jobs. Like I haven't seen a job yet where it says we require you to have uh, a BI reporting certification or DA100 certification. So it's, it doesn't suddenly like open doors by passing the test and oh yeah, all of a sudden now I'm, I'm available for these jobs that I wasn't available for prior to having this certification. I will say that it does help you stand out from others who maybe have not gone through the certification pathway. Um, but I, you know, I'll put that out there that it's definitely not a requirement for most Power BI jobs that I've seen. Uh, and so it, it's very much a personal thing that you, you might consider why you want to take it. The other piece is that it has to be renewed every two years. So if you're getting it and, and hoping to do something, it, obviously understand it does expire and you do have to renew it. As you're probably familiar with Power BI changes frequently uh, and that two year renewal is going to have additional topics on it that just don't exist yet because they're not a part of the platform yet. But the cost, if you're, if you're, uh, cost prohibitive, it's $165 to take the test, to sit for it. So, um, you know, if, if money is a factor here, that, that's basically what it costs to move forward. So, if, you know, if, if all of your answers to this are, okay, like I, I could see where these points are um, and I'm still okay moving forward, you know, we can get into some more specifics about why you should take this. And, and I'm doing this on purpose. It's, and it's really because passing this test and getting this certification in and of itself doesn't really change anything. Um, and so, yes, you could go take this test and you could pass it. And if you want that personal sort of validation that, yeah, I, I have this, you know, that's fine. And I would encourage anyone to seek out that level of validation. Um, but there's sort of like some questions I would ask you to ask yourself as you step forward. So number one, it's very simple. Like, are you currently using Power BI? Like that would make you should be answering yes to this. If you're not currently using Power BI and you want to get a Power BI certification, thinking like that that's going to open the doors for you, I would just stop right there and, and tell you that's probably not the best path forward. Like you should already be using this. There should be a tool that you're familiar with in and of itself. Uh, we'll talk about how much you need to know. But then, so you say, okay, yeah, I'm using Power BI. So are you interested in validating your Power BI knowledge? Like this is that personal question you're asking yourself. Do you want, you know, again, like why would you want to take a test if I just told you you don't need it to get a job? And it's sort of like, well, I want to know if I'm in the same frame or the same space as other individuals who are taking the test and validating their skills. So that that's certainly a good question. If you answer yes to that, then automatically I would say, okay, well, that's probably appropriate. Another great one is like, are there incentives at your job for earning this? Uh, I can speak to this that in many cases, jobs will say, hey, uh, we want to encourage our employees to get certified. Microsoft has a great reputable certification pathway, uh, and there might be some kind of financial or promotionary incentive for you earning this certification. It's always worth asking if that's not already on the table. Uh, before you just go out and get it to get it, you, it might be a question to have with your manager and say, hey, are there any established pathways? Like, is there a reason or an incentive? Maybe the company will pay for it. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to get a raise just by getting that certification. So it's worth knowing. If that's the reason you're taking the test, even better, because that's a great incentive or carrot on the stick for you to come in and say, hey, this is why I'm doing this test. The other thing is maybe you're trying to transition to a Power BI specific job. Uh, and I can think of individuals who found Power BI, maybe the similar to how I found it, which was uh, doing something and realizing this is a very cool tool, very rich tool set, and you want to continue to grow your career in a way that aligns you more and more with Power BI. 
taking this exam is a great way to say, hey, you know, not only can I, uh, am I showing up to a job interview and saying I can do Power BI, but my skills are validated. Uh, and the, the assessment will do that much is to say, like, you have a minimum level of knowledge for this program. Um, and certainly, if you have an expiring certification that you want to renew, this is it. You know, this, this is your route to go. So that would be like the last reason that you might say, I'm going to take this test because obviously your certification is about to expire. So if you find yourself answering yes to at least one of these, maybe two of these, then, then continue forward. You know, I, I think, and I've read places where people take this test and they fail and they fail and they keep asking themselves, why am I failing this test? And it, and it really, you know, you need the right balance of incentive to pass this test, as well as like, what are you going to do with this certification when you earn it? Like, it's not, people don't come knocking on your door looking for a Power BI developer just because you passed this certification. So you have to find a very personal and very, very incentivized reason to want to continue forward with this. And I think like sort of captured in this table might be some of those. Okay, so this is probably like a simple chart I just put together. So it, the question is, you know, I'm getting ready to take this test. How much do I need to prepare? Uh, and I can speak to this from my own experience, having taken the test. You know, it, it's a simple chart. If you've been using Power BI for a very small amount of time, <clears throat> you've got a lot of work ahead of you. And I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Like there's a lot on this exam that could be covered. And so if you're coming to this from having only been introduced to Power BI at a, at a very surface level, there's a lot that you're going to have to learn up. And for those of you who've been using Power BI for a fair amount of time, and, and notice the axis label, it says time developing solutions with Power BI. So I, I don't just mean that someone else at your job built a Power BI report and you're very good at clicking through it and sort of manipulating it and you understand how the visualizations work, like that's okay. These assessments are very broad in sort of covering all areas of Power BI. So developing solution implies from, from the very beginning to the very end, you have a hand in sort of getting these things out there. And so if you're at the other way on the right side of this chart, where you have years under your belt using Power BI and you've sort of touched every piece of that, you could probably just go out and take the test. You know, there's there's no, um, at some point in here, you just have to be confident that you know what you're doing. And so the more experience you have across all areas of Power BI, the, the more you're probably already equipped to take it. The less experience you have, it's probably time for you to get practicing. And so we're going to sort of look at the, what's on this this assessment to sort of get an understanding of where you actually need to be spending your time. Uh, so if you find yourself sort of somewhere on that spectrum, number one, it's important to note that Microsoft does not have any official released exams. So there's nothing that you could, you know, you could search the internet and you're going to find people that are going to say, hey, here's a released exam. There is nothing out there. Um, and the ones that are out there are garbage. And, and for reasons specifically because this test has just been changed. This is a relatively new test that came out of beta only a few months ago. And on top of that, there are no official released exams. Like in the same way you can take a released SAT, you know, these tests as a pretest, there's nothing like that. Uh, and so that, that kind of produces a barrier to how are you supposed to know what you need to know and what you don't need, you know, what you don't know. And so what Microsoft does is they provide this skills card. Um, if you just Google GA100 of uh, Microsoft, you're going to get to this page. You know, I put the link there, but the skill card, and we'll take a look at it in detail on the next slide, is really where Microsoft goes out of their way and says, hey, this is what we're going to cover on the exam. And so if you're walking into this and you want to know, okay, I, Steve, you know, I'm just getting started. How should I spend my time? The first thing I would do before you do anything else, before you buy a class, before you spend money on a book to prepare, it's to pull this sheet out, print it out, use it digitally, however, and just go line by line and highlight the skills that you have mastered and or highlight the skills that you have no idea what they mean. And this is going to really paint a pretty good picture of what you have and what you need to know. And so what that actually looks like if we zoom in on that skills card is um, is this. And, and Microsoft 
is pretty complete with how they want you to do on this program or on this assessment. And the one thing I'll say here is that, you know, this is this assessment is specifically driven towards knowing how to use Power BI correctly and knowing how to do all of the areas of this exam. And so when we look at what's on the exam, and I'm getting, I'm spending some time on this so that you have a chance to look at all of these topics here. I mean, this is essentially the exam. And so if there's one piece of material that you should use to guide your preparation for this exam, it's this sheet right here. Uh, and this is, again, it's just me colorizing the skills list that Microsoft already provides. And in many ways, if you want to go down through this list and look at the topics here, they, they go above and beyond to provide you with some a bit of context about how much of the exam each section is comprised of. You could probably just see by looking at it, the sections worth more have more topics in it. So it, it's clear that there's just more area to be covered. And I'd say, you know, if we just kind of go down this list and look at each one of these bullet points, anybody that's building preparation material for you is guided by this sheet. And, and so everyone has access to the same list of things that you would need to know. And again, this comes back to what your experience is coming into this exam. If you're relatively new to Power BI and have only worked on say visualizing the data, the orange section, and you have no experience with the other areas, again, you've got one area locked out pretty well, you probably understand most of that, but you may not really understand the other areas. And I think the first thing you need to do is, is sort of get a good handle on how many of these topics you have handled or not. And you don't have to know them at mastery, you know, a lot of these things that you, when you think about Power BI as a whole, it, you know, one of the, if we look in the blue category under create measures by using DAX, it says use DAX to build complex measures. That's a hell of a topic. You know, you could probably spend the next two years studying to master the DAX formula language. So, to so some regard, you also have to have some restraint uh, and ability to say, all right, well, that's a, that's a hell of a topic. So how how am I supposed to condense this down into mastery for this? And this is where I come back to talking about your experience using Power BI. It's that there's a base level things that you should know how to do as it relates to DAX. And, and that's kind of more or less what is covered on the exam. They're not you know, it says complex measures, you could go, you could go for days looking for content to talk about there or to study there. And so, you know, I, I will say to not be overwhelmed by like the richness of these topics. Some of this stuff is pretty straightforward in, in how you think about it. And some of this stuff is like, yeah, you know, you could really spend days, weeks, months just trying to master one of these lines. So approach this with a sense of, of like how are these skills going to grow your skill set in Power BI? The whole reason we're taking this exam is not just to get a certification, it's to validate that you know how to use the tool and you know how to use all areas of the tool. And so more than anything, this exam is intended to prove that. Hey, this is an individual that not only knows how to prepare data with Power Query, model the data using the correct cardinality and relationships, visualize the data by creating the right charts or bringing together the right information, uh, analyzing it. Now we have machine learning and premium capacity. So there's there's things that you may be like, well, Steve, I don't have premium capacity. How am I supposed to speak to that? Well, that's where you have to start to say, all right, well, let me, let me research a little bit about these topics I don't have access to. I've never used report server. How am I supposed to answer questions about it? And so again, it comes back to like, you know, you don't have to know a ton about it, but you should be familiar with some of the basics there. All right, so let's take a look at what other materials covered. I, I they go out of their way on this assessment to say that um, the topics are not definitive or exhaustive, which is sort of Microsoft speak for, we have the right to change the topics. We have the right to add topics that are not on this list. And if we try and call us out for a topic that we didn't explicitly identify, it's like we told you, that it wasn't definitive or exhaustive. So that's right on the top of the skills list. They do call out specifically that if the feature is in preview, um, it's not gonna be on the test. And now that's, you know, depending on when you plan to take the test, that can change. Um, certainly 
things come in and out of preview every couple months. So understand that something like deployment pipelines, of something like the XMLA read write endpoint, like those things are still in preview, so that they're not going to be covered. Um, they can only be added after they go into general availability. Um, and then I, I think more than anything, as we kind of talked about before, mastery on this certification is sort of mirroring what you should know to have mastery in Power BI. And so it is representative of being able to handle all areas of Power BI, whether you're doing that currently or not. And so I, I think that's the big leap is if you find yourself in a very narrow range of Power BI, like, hey, you know, Steve, I'm really, really, really good with Power Query, like that's my game. I, you know, I can do a ton of stuff transforming data, but I really haven't done anything with workspace administration. I don't know the first thing about workspace administration. So it's sort of like, as you start to uncover what it is that you know and what it is that you don't know, you're going to start to say, all right, now I got to fill these blanks in. If you go down that list and you have everything checked off and you're like, I got it, I got it, I got it just take the test. You know, it's, it, to a point, you have to have confidence in your skills. And I, I think that you may never feel that you're ready for the test. I certainly, when I sat for the test, still had some trepidation despite using the program for five years i was like i don't know if i'm ready you know it just you just have to bite the bullet you have to go for it uh, and so don't hold yourself back keep you know thinking that you're not ready you're not ready you're not ready if you start to check the boxes and you start to feel pretty confident about it go for it you know there's a pretty good chance that you're going to pass that test uh, so this is at minimum you know i, I just kind of graphically presented this ironically i did the graph in excel not power bi but you know, at minimum, this is how much or what percent of the test you can expect for each section to be. So you can see the bulk of the test here is really on the main heavy hitting parts of Power BI, being able to prepare the data, model it, and visualize it, which are probably the areas most of you are uh, familiar with in, in how you would use this program. All right, so now that you've identified that you have these gaps and you're ready to, <clears throat> you're ready to study. So what, what study materials are available? Now, Microsoft offers a great resource right on the same page as the exam. Uh, it's, a, it's an online free learning path. Just, this just came online a few months ago. So this was something that previously didn't exist. And I think that it's an amazing resource, especially if you have limited experience in certain areas. You know, obviously you could say, well, Steve, I could just play with my own Power BI and figure this out. And we're gonna talk about these learning resources. The other one is as an instructor-led class. Perhaps you're somebody that likes that virtual or real classroom environment. Uh, we'll talk about those resources. And there's a, there's a couple, D, there's actually prep courses out there specific to this test that we'll speak about. I had to cross it off again because if you start looking for these things, you're gonna find plenty of sites that are like, hey, we got a released exam guarantee that you're going to pass we've got you know, the questions or at least it's a it's an issue um avoid avoid these question dumps uh, for, for reasons that we'll speak about later but just kind of keep away from those uh, they're, they're not in your best interest so the actual learning path this is this is available on microsoft's site as i said before and every one of those skill topics that are part of that skill sheet are represented in this learning path. And so you can actually go in, um, they're fairly extensive, so you can pick a topic, you can pick all the topics. At the end of each of these learning paths is, or each of these topics within a learning path is a little summary. Uh, but essentially, like, if you look at this particular one, this is just about creating a date table. Uh, and I, I sort of put a GIF in here so you could see just how detailed some of the information is that they provide in this learning path. This is completely free. This is just right online on the same page as the testament. And it's a great way, especially if you have limited experience doing some of these tasks, it's a great way just not only for yourself to upskill, to bring, like, this is just good stuff to know if you're going to be using Power BI. So if you find yourself like, you know, Steve, I've never created a date table before. It's okay, you know, why would you create a date table? Why would you want to create a date table? You know, there's questions that you want to sort of know the answers to. Um, and these, these sheets provide you some context to that. It's a great way to learn in a pinch. And it's, it's sort of, as you can see, you step through this, you're sort of building down 
Uh, the other thing it does have are these labs. Now labs are sort of like, it's a it's a step-by-step -step way for you to access some canned data that they provide and actually practice going through some of these activities. So I know one of the big hurdles that many of you might have is, hey, see, I wanna practice this, but where am I supposed to get some dummy data to use? You know, how do I find that? These labs do that for you. So the nice part of the lab is you don't have to go find your own data set. It just provides it for you. They give you step-by-step -step instructions and you can go through and practice. If you feel a little unsure about any one of these skills, just do the lab. And the lab opens up a little sandbox for you to interact with. The other learning path at the bottom of each are these assessment questions. And you'd be thinking to yourself, well, that's great. You know, couldn't I just come to the end of the learning path, answer the questions, and then if I get all the questions right, like I'm pretty good, like I got it, you know, I can move on to the next one. Absolutely. There's only three questions though, so it's not a very like exhaustive summary of what you are doing. So it's like, you know, can you really capture all of the stuff and design a data model in Power BI with these three questions? The answer is no. Um, but you could start with the questions and be like, hey, you know, how far off am I? Uh, and certainly kind of guide your own understanding there. I, I will say that these questions in the learning path are not representative of the actual exam questions. Um, that Microsoft wouldn't do that. They wouldn't put like the actual exam questions in the learning path. But the idea is the same. And it's sort of a constant theme throughout these things. Do you know how to use Power BI? Do you understand the major functionalities of the program? And are you able to speak towards why you would do things a certain way? And I think that that's what these learning paths are for. So, you know, take the questions with a grain of salt. They're good to, as, a, as a way to check your own understanding, but they're not necessarily like the same as what is on the exam. Uh, the instructor-led pathway, this 1600 bucks so it's it's expensive the one resource i just showed you was free if you go down the wormhole of looking for an instructor-led course you're going to pay for it they're available it's certainly there for some of you that might be uh, wanting to go down that specific learning pathway uh, it's done through a microsoft learning partner so basically they give you a list of organizations you go to that organization's page they're probably offering these courses for every test that Microsoft offers, you pick it. It's, you know, it's, I couldn't tell you at this point in time if it's going to be in an actual classroom or a virtual classroom, probably a virtual classroom still, uh, but that's the price point. If your company's paying for it, sure, you know, go for it. I haven't gone through this pathway. I haven't used the learning pathway in this way, so I can't speak to it directly, um, but it's available if that's something that's more into your your liking. The other things that I, I will say are there are a number of courses that have been built specifically for this exam. And I, I did a quick search uh, in Udemy at the bottom. I found one really quickly. I did not use this. Um, I will say, and my, my square has sort of migrated in the in sort of reposting this. Hopefully it's over. But check the ratings. If you're going to use an online course, take a look at the ratings. What's happening? in many cases is people are advertising these classes they're saying that they have exam questions as i said before like the only way that you get an exam question is somebody is has broken the nda on the exam and somehow like pilfer these questions out and, and that hasn't happened this is a relatively new exam so these are all these are all like this is stuff that's been out there for years it's been rebranded to this new exam and in many cases people will call that site out immediately and say this is garbage these questions are wrong this is and you'll see the ratings are just tanking so pay attention to that don't just buy it because it has the right label you know be a little bit weary of, of what's going on when you look at sites like that the edx course um at the time that i pulled this which was a couple days ago was currently not available but this is one that was essentially guided by the same um sort of syllabus that guides the assessment but it's, it's more of a controlled learning environment uh, within a, a particular flow. The, the one that I will recommend um, comes from BI Elite. This is a course that's built specifically around the exam. Uh, Parker, who, who runs the site, is very knowledgeable in this, has built a pretty strong reputation on building YouTube videos, describing functionality in Power BI. 
Uh, and if you're looking for a course that is specifically driven to this exam, uh, then that's where I would sort of lead you to, uh, because I know you're at least going to get the right information. If you're looking for something uh, to help you prepare beyond what's already available to you on the Microsoft site. The other is talking about the exam format. Uh, it's about 58 questions. You have uh, three hours to take it. The nice thing about Microsoft's assessments, you know, in the past, when I've taken one of these at a testing center. Uh, and then after COVID, I started to look at you know, the option of taking it at home. And if you've never taken a computer-based test at home, I'd say I'm, so, I'm sold on this technique 100%. Like this is super convenient. Uh, Home-based computer tests uh, basically with Microsoft go as follows. You, you take your laptop, you have to be in a very, very secluded space where no one's gonna interrupt you. And literally nobody can come in the room. Nobody can interrupt you, like zero, or you will get canceled out of your test. So you have to be able to control your environment to some degree and at that point, you have to take pictures of your location where you're testing from all four cardinal directions. Um, they'll come on if, if you need to fix something. They'll say, hey, you know, can you move that your headphones off the desk? You can't have anything in arm's reach. They're not looking at your walls and asking you to strip your walls down of pictures and stuff. It's, it's just the testing area that you're in. Um, and then that's it. And then you're, you're actually being proctored. So somebody's watching you test the whole time. Uh, but at least you can do it in the convenience of your home. So I would recommend that. Uh, I was able to schedule the test the same day that I wanted to take it. So let's say I schedule the test at 10 a.m. and I, I log into Microsoft, I wanna to test today, I was able to put the test like two hours later. So you don't need a lot of front, you don't need to front load the test. You could basically take it the same day you wanna register for it. Uh, the passing score is 700, that, that's sort of, I don't know what that means because it's, it's 58 questions, does that mean 70%? Does that, it's, it's hard to say, it's just what the cutoff is. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, and then the nice thing is you get your results immediately upon completion. Finish the test, you know whether you pass or fail immediately, um, which would be the case regardless of where you take it. And it tells you how you did in each category. So those skills categories, it will say, that you're you know, one of three, you're either on par with everyone else that took it, you're better than them, or you need improvement. Um, but it doesn't really tell you how many questions come from each category, it just tells you relative to everyone else that took it, how you did. So question types, uh, this is fair to say, the majority of the test is multiple choice. Uh, so I'd say overwhelmingly, it's traditionally what you would expect. It is a it is a multiple choice test. There are some unique question types here worth, worth noting. Uh, with any kind of data-driven test, there's there are case studies on this. A case study is where you have a scenario based on some kind of detailed business practice. Uh, they give you information about the data, they give you information about the requirements, and then they ask you questions about it as it relates to how you would use Power BI. That's where this data analyst piece comes in. So they're saying, and the questions and the scenarios would match the kinds of things that you would expect to be dealing with if you were working as a BI developer in a business. Um, generally private, like sales-oriented businesses. So that's, <clears throat> these case studies are, are maybe like, four or five questions per, but there's, um, I, in my exam, there were two. Uh, there's also questions that are like drag and drop. So they're like a little bit more um, feature rich. So you have to move something from this area of the screen and put it to this other area of the screen. Uh, and really like the options there are either you're filling in the blank. So you're, you're filling in sort of formulas. You're filling in information about mQuery or DAX or you're like reordering things. So the way I would describe it is how to do certain things in Power BI. You know, uh, this, this is how I'm gonna do it. Um, the other, you know, and then there's multiple select, which as you can infer, is just picking more than one correct answer, or there might be multiple correct answers. I will say that the way the exam is scored is you get points for every answer you get correct. So if, the, if this question has multiple parts and you have to drag something in there, 
Uh, you get points for every part of it you could correct. It's not an all or none scenario. And they're very clear with that in the language on the exam. So uh, you're not, if you butcher one part of something, you're not losing out on all the points. So it, it's important to try uh, and do as much as you can with each of these questions. It's not clear uh, how much each part of a whole question counts towards the total. Like there's some mystery behind that. Is, is each part the same as one multiple choice question? Like how does this, how does this all weigh into the total? It's not clear. Uh, in terms of what you should expect in question delivery, this is my experience. Your experience might be different. I can only speak to the times I've taken it, but uh, generally I started with the case studies, which is probably a preferred way to do it because these take the longest amount of time. Case studies, you're going to find yourself going back and forth, back and forth to the requirements, the question, the requirements, the question. Uh, and it takes a little bit of time. It's not like an easy, like, oh, I got the answer right there. It, it was a, a considerable amount of back and forth. So it's probably better to get that out of the way. And then you get everything else. Uh, once you finish one section, so once you finish the case studies, you close it out and you can no longer return. So they do split the test into those two groups. So it is worth noting that you kind of do the case studies and then you do everything else or it's going to be vice versa. Maybe you do everything else and then you do the case studies. Um, interestingly, you don't actually use Power BI at all in the exam. There's, there's no simulated lab. There's no activity that's like, a, you know, show us where you would click in Power BI. It's not a practicum. It is very much a multiple choice test. So you're not actually demonstrating anything in Power BI the program itself. Uh, so with, you know, which is unique in the fact that you're taking a test about a program, but you never actually use the program. It, it, the questions I will say are very specific to knowing the program. So uh, it's one of those situations where you wouldn't be able to pass the test if you weren't already using Power BI. Uh, the, the other piece, you get that score report, which I spoke about after you finish the score report just breaks down your performance in each of the five main areas. There's nothing that you can infer from the score report that's going to give you some kind of insights into how you did. It doesn't tell you, oh, you missed the question about that. Like there's nothing, it's, it's sort of just, it's a black hole. You just know, oh, generally I did pretty good in this area or I did really good in this area. Okay, so practice questions, as I said before, sorry, it, you know, initially I was going to try and do something with questions and as I kept coming back to it, I said, you know what, it's really not, you don't see this for a reason and, and there's a point, bullet point here, which is that nobody in the Power BI community, whether they're on YouTube or are putting these questions out there and it's because specifically we all signed an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, when taking the test. Uh, and so once you have experience with the test if you turn around and you start simulating questions that are kind of like they were on the test you're kind of breaking the nda in a way and so most people shy away from that and that's part of the reason why that most of these main sites are not doing that um, and if you're following along with it it's it's basically not going to be there so uh, be again wary of sites claiming to have exam questions for the test it, they're they're out there uh, i've found them just as much as you have with Google searching. These generally are probably artifacts from the old test that's been around for years, that 778. Uh, this test was transformed. So again, like when they rebranded this test to DA100, they changed the format of the test. They changed the focus of the questions. And the new assessment doesn't really have the same flavor as the old assessment. So I've taken both this year, so I can speak to like this sort of like, you know, one test was more theory focused. The older test was more focused on like, hey, do you know very nuanced things about DAX and mQuery? It was kind of like buried into the language where the new test is more, do you practically know how to use Power BI as a program and not so heavy in, you know, can you answer this very, very specific DAX question? So don't get yourself too balled up in whether or not you know the DAX correctly. So basically we're at a point where it's like, what do you do now? And I think like if I were giving everyone on this call a pathway, I would say it like this. Number one, if you're beginning with Power BI or you're, you would consider yourself a novice, like there's no race for you to pass this test. 
even if you pass it and get the certification and you get put, let's say then the next day you get a job as a BI developer, like these jobs in any industry you work with, there's going to be an expectation that you know what you're doing when you come on the job. Like jobs that I've started specifically with Power BI, there was no test to get the job. They said, all right, great, here you go. Here's your first task. And so if you're not ready for that level of like sink or swim, then take your time, like learn, grow, because it's, it's in your best interest to learn to use this program in a safe and, and friendly environment that you're not like, under the gun because you got a job and you weren't ready and now you're sweating it trying to trying to learn power bi and finish your obligations for this client and or this organization and you're just like ah. so just be careful i would suggest taking the learning pathway and just build your knowledge base across all areas of power bi so if you're intermediate you have great experience with power bi but maybe you, you some boxes that you checked on that skills list you, you need to fill in yeah, then, then go go fill those in. Take some opportunities to learn the areas of the program that you wouldn't have otherwise been using or maybe that you haven't used. Watch some videos, do the learning path. Um, and then if you're ready, take the exam. Like I think for most intermediate Power BI users, you're in a good place. Fill in the blanks with what you don't know and take it. And with a pro user, just take the test. If you're gonna pass it without any prep, like unless you're a pro with a very narrow focus of the program, um, you're going to be in good shape. So I, I think for most of these users, don't, you know, have confidence in yourself and take the assessment. And basically when it's all said and done, what do you get? You get this cool badge to add to your email, to, to put on your resume, to kind of have some assurance that, that you're there. So for those that stuck with me, thank you guys for, for participating in this. I hope this at least gives you some context. I can speak again to, you know, what I've done and, and my experiences with the exam. But I think more than anything, it's it's a matter of just doing the preparation you need to, having confidence in your skills, and then going on and taking it. You know, and then looking at what this is going to do for you. You know, where do you want to grow in your career? What do you want to do with this when you're done? Okay, so with that, um, it looks like there are a few questions coming in. It sounds like the sound dropped a lot. I'm just reading through some questions. The presentation will be shared after on the Pragmatic Works website. Uh, it looks like, okay, it looks like those are the only questions. Cool, all right guys, well it says, what part of the exam did you find the most difficult? Uh, so I will say that there were questions on the exam that I didn't know the answer to. And they were very like nuanced, features that you have you'd have to have committed something to memory uh, and in some cases there were times where I was like you know what I, I don't know this answer um, I think when you get into very specific parts of the M M language and power query it can be nuanced when you look at the answer choices and you look at the differences in the answer choices and you're like man I see the differences but I don't know which one of these is the correct answer you know at times like I just moved on so I would say, you know, you only got three hours. I didn't take the full time. I took, I had about an hour left over when I finished. So I think more than anything, it, it's just a matter of kind of just moving forward. Can you write notes in the exam? No, you cannot. You can't have anything on your desk. You can't have, there's like, you can comment on the questions. You can mark questions for review. But you can't have, a, you can't have like paper pencil on your desk and, and writing notes. The, the digital version of the exam, you can flag questions. Um, I don't know that you can actually like write notes to yourself. If you could, it wasn't a feature that I was using. Okay, did you keep recordings that I can add? To? Okay, let's say, is the exam full of DAFs or M code? The old exam, the one that's being discontinued was, this one is not. Remember, the skills sheet only shows DAX is one section of the skill sheet. So you could think of it like you're probably only going to get a handful of questions. And of those handful of questions, it's not, you know, they're not trying to, they're not looking at Power BI proficiency as proficiency in DAX and M code. It's a small piece of the bigger ecosystem. So what is the name of the course you're recommending? Is it, it's BI Elite. So if you just Google search BI Elite. Guy's name is Parker Stevens. Um, that, that offers that course. He has a pretty good YouTube channel if, if you're into following it. Is there any reason to take two, the two old exams? No. 
There's not. Basically, if you're using Power BI, what's going to happen is you'll take those two old exams, the 778 and 779. You'll take them, you'll pass, you'll get a certification, and that's you know, that certification will sit on your thing for two years. It expires, and now you'll have the DA100. So if you're and the exams aren't tremendously that different. You could take it if you're like you want to build like some kind of certification record, and you're just like I. I I just want to do it because I want these badges on my email. Okay, fine. You know, it's nothing wrong with that. But there's this new exam is more specific to functionality of Power BI. I only took it because at the time this exam wasn't out. So there's the only certification pathway for Power BI was still the old pathway. And so uniquely then the new pathway came online like two weeks after I passed the BI reporting, they're like, oh, we got a new test. And I was like, well, I'll deal with that later. So it was, it's kind of, my situation was more unique because I was asked to get certified uh, back in February and that was the only pathway at the time. So I did it. Okay, how often can you retake the exam? That's a good question. I, I don't know that answer specifically, um, but I, there's a, Microsoft tries to sell a, like an exam retake it's something you have to pay for that's, you know, if this exam is $165 a pop, you know, I think that they offer something that you can say, well, if I, if I fail it, can I get a retake? And maybe you pay a little bit more for the ultimate registration. It's on their certification website. I don't know what the actual window is. If you fail it, if I fail the test today and I'm asked to retake it, what, um, do you know, do you have to wait 60 days? Do you have to wait? I don't know. So I don't I don't know what that answer would be. Okay, are there any available test cases online? I'm not sure what test cases means. Um, I don't, I'm not I'm not exactly sure what's meant by that. It says does the Power BI course from Pragmatic Works sufficient in preparing for the exam? So Pragmatic Works does offer Power BI courses. I'd say the difference between Pragmatic Works courses is that they're not created for the exam. So if, if you're asking, are they sufficient in preparing for the exam? Well, it's a Power BI course, so I would tell you yes, of course. The you know it just depends. You know, Pragmatic Works' online courses are specific for learning the platform completely across all areas of the platform. So you're going to get the same information. It's it's a course that is probably going to take longer to work through. You know, if you're coming to this looking for exam prep resources, those were the resources I shared. If you're looking for how do I learn Power BI in general and how do I build my skill set with certain resources, then certainly Pragmatic Works courses are going to provide you that. Uh, but none of the courses in Pragmatic Works are specifically titled how to prepare for DA100. It's like they're just they're teaching you Power BI. So you're going to get the same material across a lot of different sessions. You know, the end goal is still the same. Are you proficient or at mastery with Power BI? Okay, so it says here, test cases in a paper. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what that's referring to. Okay, thank you for sharing the recording. Is exam having questions on Power BI Report Server? Very, very few questions on Power BI Report Server. It's there, you need to be familiar with it. It's like, it's like it is part of the Power BI family of products. Um, look at the skill sheet again and look to see you know, everybody that takes the exam gets a different load of questions. It's coming from a, you know, they're probably auto-generated. So everyone's experience might be a little different. Um, okay, let's see. I think we are, it says, what path would you recommend for becoming a data expert after DA100? I, th I think like a data expert, it's, it's kind of a curiosity. Like I can speak to my own experience. Like there's so many different paths you can go down. Um, you know, I, I think for many of you on this call, you have to sort of identify like, what do you actually want to do when you're on the job working with data? And, you know, understand that Power BI as a tool exists in an ecosystem where we're more sort of business side focused. So a lot of times like business users will say, I need this, or I need to know this information from our data. And you're kind of the middle person making that magic happen. There's also a lot of data roles within the sort of like the sort of the back end, the stuff you don't see, the Azure, you know, Azure SQL database, data factory. There's there's a lot of like things that you can get involved with on that side, 
which might be less focused on the actual business needs and more focused on making sure the data is getting from this source appropriately categorized and this source and ready to consume in this source. Um, but that's, that's a very open-ended question. I, I'd say data expert can be a lot of different things. You just have to find what it is that you enjoy doing and, and seek that out. There's a job for you somewhere if you want to be a data expert. It's just what do you want to do every day? You know, what do you want your day-to-day -to, -day to look like? Okay, well, what, uh, what about last part report distribution? I'm not sure what that question means here. The distribution of report in organization. Again, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that question is referring to, but okay, I'm gonna close it out there. Thank you guys for, for joining those that stuck with me through the end of it and um, really appreciate that you came with it. I hope this was informative and thank you very much.